702 and meeting is now open. Oh, Grace, can you take minutes because Tom oh, Paul is in here. Um, okay, uh, you want to, did everyone have a chance to look at last week's uh, meeting minutes? Yep. Any problems? Nothing I saw. Okay. I move so, to we uh I move we, we accept the minutes as distributed. Second. Any discussion? Hearing none. Um just call the vote, Tommy. E A, yep. Ken? Yep. And me? Catherine? Yes. Okay, so the motion passes. Um Treasurer's report. Uh, we actually have something this week. Um, the uh, dues for the uh, Central Planning Commission are up. Uh, we we're going to take them from the regional planning account, and we need a motion to do so. So moved. I need a second. second. That's just uh, for discussion. Okay. Uh, yeah. Yeah, we should probably at the end we should probably authorize the uh, uh, chairperson to uh, act on behalf of the board on these type matters. Work with the town uh, planner to sign these, so we don't need the three signatures if we make the motion. It'll just be the chairman's signatures will be necessary okay. for these things involved. That'd be great, Mr. Mr. Kerry. Good evening. Hey, how are you, Tom? So that would be um, a, a separate after this vote. We can discuss that later on. Well, I mean, you can, I mean, it, it, you can, as a part of this, you can author, uh, the board can authorize you to just sign it, but. Okay. Yeah, and just note it going forward. Okay. So it doesn't take a motion or anything, you just. You can do a formal motion, yeah. Okay. It's it's sort of, I mean, yeah, it's, it's good to do a formal motion. Okay, Tommy, do you want to? Um, do a formal motion and yeah, the, the most motion would be to uh, approve this and to allow you uh, going forward the uh, authorization to sign vouchers and these things for the board, whatever the proper name for them is. Yeah, second. Okay. So for clarification, Tom, is that that's for all vouchers going forward? Obviously, with and we'll just inform the board um, after the fact that uh, vouchers have been endorsed by the chair. Well, the thought process is that we're going to be bringing them up uh, to the board um, at, a, at a meeting. Uh, the only thing that's left is just the signatures. Um, this way, we're just agreeing that it would just be the one. If there's any objection, we'd, we'd be talking about it at that meeting. So um, that's the way we've been doing it for a couple of years. So this is Paul. So what, I, what I've done in other stuff would be that the voucher gets circulated and I've done sort of a negative notice on this, this is CPC stuff and said, hey, here's a, I'm, I'm the chair of CPC, here's a voucher, here's the backup. If I don't hear from everybody by Wednesday at noon, I'm going to sign the voucher. If somebody objects, then we can put it on for our next meeting to discuss it. Is that what you were talking about, Tom? Because I, I, I came in a little bit late. Similar process here, but we're meeting every two weeks. We discussed it then that, uh, and then at, at that discussion, we say, yes, go ahead and sign it. Okay. Similar to the no objection that the CPC uses. Okay, any other discussion? So the chair's gonna, the chair alone will sign vouchers yes. as, approved, as approved by them. Yes, yes. Okay. I got it. So hearing no, I'm Margaret. Hearing no more discussion. Um, Tom. Aye. Ken. Aye. Paul. Aye. And me, I, and Margaret. Um, we'll loop you into the expo. <laughs> okay. Sorry, I was having a hard time logging in. <laughs> yeah. Are you up in Maine or? Yeah. Okay. You probably can't oh, see yeah. the link. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh. 
Okay, so it passes. Um, anything else on the treasurer's part? No, that's all I've got. Thank you. I do have a question on the treasurer's report. <clears throat> we ended up the year with a surplus, and I don't believe we ever formally turned it back or allocated it anywhere. Mm -hmm. Did it automatically revert back to the town budget? Okay. Well, yeah, it, it just is automatically replenished, okay. brought up to you know okay. what the fiscal year 2024 okay. um, budget is. So okay. you just, you got account you got deposited the difference to bring you up to. Okay. Oh, okay. budget. <laughs> okay, so we got less in in new money this year because we had old money left over. Yeah. Okay. Um, next on the agenda is the planners report. Sure. I don't have um, a whole lot uh, tonight. I mean, I will we'll talk about because I've been working really on the, the solar bylaw stuff um, with Grace. Uh, so we'll talk about that later. The EDC is going to, well, I, I prepared a recommendation on behalf of the EDC to the Board of Selectmen that will be on for tomorrow night. So I know a, a board of, um, an EDC member or two will be showing up um, for that. That that was for um, earmark funds. Uh, the EDC was asked um, basically how, how would you like to split up $125,000 worth at earmark? Money if you had the choice uh, for economic development reasons. So they put together a couple options. Uh, the options sort of ranged from doing pre permitting things over at uh, Holy Angels to doing parking analyses uh, to doing um, a, a, a visioning workshop slash goal setting, almost like master planning uh, for. Uh, West Upton, similar to what was done for Upton Center. So sort of mimicking that process down there, uh, as well as just updating the Upton Center uh, visioning plan to reflect things that have already been accomplished. So that that uh, visioning uh, document is, is up to date and accurate. Um, so the, the, that was a, a few of the things. Um, the as you, I, I think I noted last time, I can't remember. Uh, the zoning board obviously approved Governor's Landing. We'll be discussing that tonight. Um, we'll be, I mentioned last time about the funding for uh, community planning grants for MBTA communities. So um, again, I'm going to try to get out for. Uh, a request for quotes for consultants on that. So again, thirty thousand dollars for assistance on that. On that, um, I saw Grafton just sent out like the exact same request for quotes that I was going to be sending out. So I reached out to Fiona, uh, who's the, the the planner in Grafton, and we can't really collaborate because it's I mean it's so specific to each individual community. Otherwise, it'd be a good regional um, effort. But uh, I'm just going to use her as just a hey. How's it going over there? <laughs> this sort of thing, so we can uh, touch base. But that's, that's more, uh, you know, helpful to me more than anybody else, I think. Uh, but yeah, that, that's about it. Oh yeah, um, is, I, was, I knew I had a question. Is any of that money being used for any wetlands delineation of um, the river? Any of the EDC money, or is the, that coming from a different pot, or is that? Uh, I put in for grant funding for that. Okay. So, but it's also possible that uh, the EDC, uh, the earmark, I mean, definitely earmark funds can be used to do that. Okay. Um, so it's just a matter of, you know, I, mean, I, I think I think it's a matter of I, if, if what I sent in if we get funding for that i mean that money can be spent on that same project for other portions of that project um so that was the way i framed it and my my suggestions to the board of selectmen so it's like a matter of delineating the wetlands along the riverfront area or just delivering you know the buffer of the riverfront area and understanding the permitting that would have to take place in order to get parking there but then it's also a matter of well, then we need surveying and engineering. So, like, there's all sorts of money that can be spent <laughs> from different places on that on that particular project. And the other thing that fits into this conversation is that 
Um, Joe Layden sent out a, a, a email today regarding a um, design charrette or workshop scheduled, I think, for the 25th of this month to discuss potential reuses. It's it's a visioning thing um, for the uh, Milton Ristine and for the Old Holy Angels. So that sort of fits in. It's not one of the things that the EDC is looking for funding for, something that's already right. you know, in the works. So it just sort of fits in with what you were saying. I think I'll look at both buildings. Yeah. Yep. Come up with, you know. Oh, and we'll have, um, uh, uh, we're down a few members on the EDC, so if anybody, you know, if anybody wants to join the EDC, um, send them our way. Uh, so there's that. And then we'll, um, I think we're, we're going live with the new website Friday. Is that the plan? So the, the new town website Friday. So patience. <laughs> patience with us on that. So any questions for Mike? Okay. Then, um, so it is, it is 7.13 and we'll close the regular meeting and open a public hearing on Governor's Landing or continue the public hearing on Governor's Landing. And Jeff, you can what do you think? Great. Great. Thank you. Jeff Roloff, uh, outside counsel to the applicant. Uh, Sean Malone, our project engineer, is with us also. Um, it seems like it's been a while since we've been in front of the planning board. Um, we have had a couple meetings with the Zoning Board of Appeals and got a decision uh, recently from that process. So that's all gone well. We had deferred our discussions here to give DGT an opportunity to review uh, the most recent submittal package from Sean, responding to previous comments, some layout changes, et cetera. Um, and, and we did receive from DGT today a review letter. And for the most part, uh, DGT doesn't have any further comments with respect to the various issues that it had raised. There were two points that it raised that um, I think I'll defer to uh, or or hand it over to Sean to respond to. One of them relates to some calculations. Um, these are identified on page two of DGT's letter, if you have that in front of you. And then um, there's a small informational discrepancy in the plan set. Um, this was noted on the top of page six of DGT's letter. So um, we are gonna be tinkering with the plans in response to some recent Conservation Commission comments. Um, I think, uh, Sean, if you don't mind just responding to those two comments from DGT's letters, um, letter that um, sort of warranted some kind of discussion and then um, identify the changes that we're proposing for the commission so that you're aware of, um, of the revisions that you'll be seeing shortly. Sure. Uh, good evening, all. Uh, let me get my uh, my plan up here for you before I share my screen uh where is that other one bear with me for one second okay um <clears throat> all right as uh, as jeff mentioned there was two two comments that um dgt still kind of had out there other than that they had uh, indicated that uh they had no further comment and they were satisfied um if i can share my screen i'll just quickly show you what those two comments are and I can tell you what we're what we're gonna do about it here. Okay, so the first one it was really a uh, a comment about the um, modeling and the the graphics for the post development watershed plan. There was one discrepancy or two discrepancies, I guess that that didn't click, and that revolved around this shaded area here. Um, this is the reach in 1A, and, and what this is, is in the model is just the area after the stormwater discharges from the pond flows through the woods, and it distributes through the woods more. It slows it down. You get some more infiltration. Um, so that that's part of the model. In our model, we had this width as 130 feet wide. 
And then when we showed it graphically, we showed it as, as 40 feet wide. Um, and the reason being is when it actually channels out here, it probably, it could get this 130 foot flow, um, but that would be over time. So uh, sim similar issue um, over here in 2A, this is the other, other area. We had this flaring out to a 75 foot width by the time it got to the, the watershed. So uh, you can look at it either way, but to simplify things, um, we didn't include, we, we revised the calculations this afternoon. We didn't include that extra flare um, as it roams through the woods. So we revised the calculations to that 40 feet that's shown on this plan here that was reviewed by DGT. And the net result was no change, maybe a, a tenth of a percentage point in the uh, the rate of runoff. So um, that that that's easily resolved. We can talk about how, how you want us to do that. If we want to maybe have one cohesive stormwater study, um, you know, at, at the time of your, your vote or, or however you want to do that. But um, net result, suffice it to say, uh, no change to address that. Uh, the second one was a discrepancy. Um, just, yeah, sorry. Just, just before you go on, they had mentioned breaches 1A, 2A, 3A, and you just meant you just talked about 1A and 2A. Is there a third yeah, one as well? So, sorry, yes, yeah, 3A down here. Um, and this one, I think, was uh, was fine. So you don't, you're not going to make changes to that one? Uh, uh, yeah, question before we move on. Uh, I'd like to get Margaret's take on this. And the, the runoff yeah. is going to be a dual for conservation and for the planning board. Wouldn't there be one report for all, for both? Yeah, exactly, Tom. And uh, I'm sorry, Paul, I'll, I'll jump back. I, I, I jumped ahead of myself. I was talking about 1A when I was meant to be talking about 3A. That This was the other one. 1A was confirmed to be consistent. It was 2A and 3A that there was a discrepancy that we've gone and changed the model, if that clarifies for you. Okay, so 1A, which is the largest area, you're not changing at all. You say it's consistent both graphically and with the model, the numbers on the model. And yeah, 2A and, and 3A, yeah. you're saying there is a discrepancy, but that the when you rerun them to, to eliminate the discrepancy, the they'll be, uh, no material change in your calcs. Exactly. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So, Sean, um, are you going to suggest revising the DR, uh, this sheet, this plan sheet that we're looking at, which is one of the drainage sheets within the stormwater report to match the calcs that you already did? Or are you proposing to change the calcs and, and correlate them with this image? Yes. The latter. Okay. That, that, um, because I think that, that, you know, just to make everything jive, it, it does make more sense. And um, if I can jump ahead to uh, what Tom was mentioning, um, you know, th this does, this is the same report. The Conservation Commission is getting the same report as the planning board here. So these mm -hmm. comments are the same. So what our thought was, and, and I'll go over one other uh, open issue with the Conservation Commission we hope to resolve with their agent um, this week. Um, but ultimately create one final set of plans and stormwater study that all have the same date that the planning board has and the conservation commission has and that's what's referenced in your decision um, so that that's our intent um, and the second comment was um, with respect to the profile and the, the the graphic grading shown in in the site plan view for the cul-de-sac and all that is, so we have the, uh, the 366 contour here is, is what they mentioned. And this is in the vicinity of um, uh, elevator or station 50. And then when you see it graphically, it's further down. So really just this contour line needs to be pulled back on the site plan to match with the profile. And the profile is what dictates. That's where you determine your um, slopes in your K values. So we just need to make that small change so the plans jive. Um, and that was it for the, the DGT comments. The only other 
thing I'll mention that Jeff referenced is a um, uh, a change for the Conservation Commission. This came from uh, Dave Pickard, their um, peer review agent. Um, and what he suggested is we have this wildlife crossing in between the vernal pool up at the top of the hill coming down to the wetlands in the lower portion. And this is a, you know, a three foot high, 10 foot wide box culvert to allow the critters to migrate under the road so they don't go over the top and potentially get squashed. Um, and he suggested adding just these 50 foot wing walls to either side to help, you know, give a give a wider berth to the, the critters as they roam and, and funnel them down into this uh, wildlife crossing. And that would be simply just uh, um, a boulder farmer's wall, so similar to some of the walls that you see out there. So that's something that we've agreed to. This hasn't gone into the Conservation Commission yet. We wanted to meet, we're trying to schedule a meeting with Dave this week just to confirm that all the other comments are addressed and there's no other plan changes. Um, other than that, things are uh, are just as, as you've seen them. And just yep. as follow up to that, thanks, Sean. Um, so with respect to the various waivers we had talked about at the last meeting, there was one that Sean and I weren't clear as to the direction you wanted us to go on, and that pertains to the sidewalk configuration. So you'll remember that our layout um, has proposed pretty for a while now consistently a four foot sidewalk in one side of the roadway. And at the meeting we had, I think it was in April, there was some discussion of whether or not you wanted that to be, you were okay, whether you were okay with that or if you wanted us to increase it to five feet. I think that's what the, there was some sort of back and forth on that. So I just wanted to bring that to the surface again and get some clarification as to what the board, what the board's desire is. If you want us to increase it to five feet, it's easy enough to do. Um, we had proposed four feet just as, you know, one of the ways to decrease um, the impervious surfaces out there. So we're looking for some direction on that so we can get the final detail into this next plan iteration. Well, and Jeff, the, um, the, the sidewalk is ADA compliant, right? Yes. Yes. So the only thing to increase it would be to, okay. Uh, Tom, you had something to say? Yeah, well, my guess, uh, my question would be: Do we do we have enough information on whether it should be four or five? Who who's going to be using uh, the sidewalk? Is it going to be a lot of via, uh, like um, uh, wheelchairs and things like that, that, or motor vehicles on the sidewalk that would that would need to have a five foot as opposed to a four, or is it similar to every other sidewalk that's it's in town at four feet? I don't see why we should have this be a wider sidewalk than anywhere else in town, to be perfectly honest. I think the op opportunity to reduce surface area, impervious surface area is good and we should take it. There's a four foot, a four foot sidewalk seems in my mind to be quite acceptable in a town the size of Upton and in a development the size of this development. Well, as that's actually my question, is there a reason to go to five? I'm asking, is there a reason because of the clientele that we should go to five? If there isn't, we should stay at, at four feet. Easy to maintain. I don't see a reason to go to five. I actually got out my measuring tape today to see how wide five feet was. <laughs> it's plenty big. Yeah, I'm, I don't have an issue with the the waiver as requested one side of the street four feet so can we just go back a step jeff before you go through the the waiver request um sean i do have a, another question on the dgt report um at yeah. the end of it they have a general plan review comments that has to do with the retaining wall and it has to do with um you know uh you know it says here that you know it's um some areas the height is in excess of 30 feet. Um, I did not see where the 30 feet was, but that was probably just me. Um, but I just wanted to get some more detail into what work has been done on soil conditions and, you know, what is going to be, you know, it talked about the retaining wall being, you know, boulder walls, ledge cuts. I'd like some further, you know, elaboration on what that is. Sure. 
um and let me uh jump back here see if this uh graphic will help with this discussion so and this I is see some of it is coming down from the from the hill from the uh protected space and then that's one retaining wall and then the second one protecting the wetlands right so so there's there's a few different retaining walls. There's this one here, I think that you were just talking about around the, the protected space on the uphill side. So this is a this is a cut retaining wall, meaning that the protected side is higher than the developed side. And we did a number of test pits out in this site, I think maybe 20 or so. And generally what we found, and even just walking around there, if you've been out there, you can see uh this is pretty much all ledge in here so what we anticipate this being is 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 a ledge cut like you might see on the side of the highway especially you know driving up to new hampshire where it's just a rock face um and then there'll be some blasted material excavated out of here and we propose to use that you know you you you, you break them down into more manageable blocks and use that for a, a stacked boulder retaining wall here on the downhill side. So in this case, the protected side, this is the low side and the developed side is the high side. So it's really what we're doing is we're, we're, we're doing a cut and fill. Um, so that that's kind of the, the walls in a nutshell. This is the area over here where we do have some higher walls on the range of 30 feet. And then they kind of blend back into grade. These are more around 10 feet or so until it uh, blends back into the natural grade. That That's really just on the, um, uh, the, the cut um, walls. The fill walls, I think the highest that we have is about 15 feet. I don't think we really get higher there. And part of the reason we're able to do that is with the buildings here, you, you make it a walkout. So you have the grading in between, so you gain 10 feet and kind of stepping it down. So um, that's that's kind of the quick snapshot of how it was designed, graded with the, the walls. Can I get into any more detail for you? Just another quick question. Um, when I do go up the highway to go to New Hampshire, pretty much anywhere in Massachusetts, you know, you do have the ledge cuts, but you also have like rock balls. And I was just wondering if anything has been, you know, I, I assume that you guys wouldn't be putting a wall in if you thought that it was going to, you know, collapse it or rock. Yeah, it no, fall down. yeah, no, absolutely. And and that's one of the steps in the process is, you know, one, once it's cut, you got to have a geotechnical engineer go out there and look at the okay. rock, make sure it's sound. Because, yeah, absolutely. Uh, that's the last thing anybody would want would be. Uh, you know, some rock to fall down and hit somebody in their backyard or, or or anything like that. But that that'll all be part of the construction process. Okay. Any other questions? Or on, on the DGT report, and then Jeff, you can go through your the waiver request again. Okay. Um, yeah, and that wasn't actually, we had already talked through the waivers. I wasn't going to go back to those. They were laid out in a letter dated April 6th, and then we focused that meeting um, on those the last time. It was just that one sidewalk question that we were unclear as to how you wanted us to proceed on. So um, my hope is that um, in light of the ZBA approval and sort of where we are in the process here, that the board would be comfortable asking staff to start working on a draft decision um i worked with michael with respect to drafting a decision for the zba i would hope to do the same here um, and then obviously present it to the planning board and ideally at the next meeting you could review that decision we could keep the hearing open so we could discuss any issues that that might prompt and then ideally close this hearing and get a vote well, that means we should probably have a pretty good template to, to start with. Uh, I'm, I'm sure it may even be better than the uh, zoning boards. I'm not sure. Maybe more extensive. But if we can at least just start the template and review that, that would be a good point.
When is the board's next meeting? If somebody could. I think it's the 24th of August. 22nd. 22nd of August. Okay, so, so you don't have a second. It. Okay, yep. So that gives us plenty of time then. Um, in that case, if you're comfortable with it, you know, the goal would be to get a uh, draft decision put together at the staff level, get it to you um, well in advance of that meeting so you have time to review it. And uh, again, our hope would be that we could get on that agenda, review that decision, and that you would feel comfortable at that point closing the hearing and voting. That sounds and okay. Jeff, we still have that big elephant, right, as to what, what we were going to do with the water <laughs> sewer line, right? Yeah, so I wondered maybe maybe we hadn't. Um, yeah, let's. That I'm glad you brought that up, uh, Paul. So let me actually. Um, well, I don't have to share it. I'm going to explain to you what we explained to the ZBA, and maybe this decision was made after the last planning board meeting. So you'll remember, I think it was actually we were really struggling with how to deal with this alternative sewer route because we want to keep that as a viable alternative in the event that the town doesn't proceed with its own project and it's got the mass works grant application pending right now it won't know until october whether it's going to get those funds um and i think it was after the last planning board meeting where um i sort of convinced my client to rather than re having the cross-country sewer route the backup route um peer reviewed now and vetting all those issues now Let's just proceed with this process, um, accept a condition that requires us to connect to the town's uh, infrastructure in Milford Street. And just so you know, my client has agreed, and this is committed a commitment made as part of the MassWorks application to contribute, I think it's $735,000 towards that project, <clears throat> which is the estimated cost of um, the cross country route. So my client is willing to sort of back off of trying to get that backup route approved now, so long as you understand that it's doing that without waiving any rights to come back to you to pursue a modification. So um, for the ZBA decision, what we folded into that document, and I would propose something similar here, <clears throat> were two things. Um, number one, it would just be a finding you know, like a factual point in your the body of your decision, articulating the point that the applicant is represented that it would accept the special permit condition <coughs> requiring it to connect its development to the town's planned water and sewer infrastructure within Milford Street, but with a reservation of right to challenge that condition and to pursue a modification of this permit if the town does not secure the MassWorks grant or does not otherwise make a commitment by November of this year to commence construction of that project in early 2024. In that event, the applicant may pursue a special permit modification seeking approval of its proposed alternative cross country utility route, the details of which would be reviewed during that modification process, which will involve a new public hearing. So that was a factual finding um, that the ZBA made in its decision based on our representations there. And then um, correlating with that was a condition that the utilities for this project be provided to the site by connection to the utilities that the town intends to construct along Milford Street once those utilities are in place. So by doing this, um, we are avoiding the need to continue with peer review and try to get support for that backcountry route. We know that DPW, you know, that Dennis does not, he's not going to support that route. Um, even if it's the only route, I'm not sure he'll support it, but he's certainly not going to support it now where there is an alternative that he thinks is going to be viable in the near future. So we're taking that issue out of, out of the equation as long as the uh, it's clear to everyone that we're we're doing it without without waiving our rights to pursue it later if we need to. Yeah, and I, I think so. I think you were you, you are one meeting ahead with, with the ZBA than you were with us. My memory is we talked about this and you said, hey, we'd love to get an approval. We'd love you to sign off on these waivers. We said, well, we can't just sign off in waivers in the abstract and we yep. can't give you approval. 
without knowing which way you're going or you have to do it both ways. So it sounds like this is what this, this does get us a path. Right. So in my mind. Yeah, and I'm glad you brought that up. I, I I had just forgotten, to be honest with you, that we had the biggest issue of the project. That's a big issue. This is a really big issue, <laughs> right? Well, but a um, question so for we had resolved it that way with the ZBA, and we're proposing to do the same here. So that should okay. simplify that issue quite a bit. Uh, Jeff, I got a question to the chair, if I may. Uh, yeah. wh why this? Why this? Uh, speci specifications on what you can uh, come back on. You can come back and ask for a change in anything can't you aren't you can't you come back and and at any time afterwards and ask the board to reconsider anything that we voted on yeah we could we just want the record to be clear for you but also other people reviewing the record what our our representation to the board is so rather than just burying this representation in a video that somebody may never see again we asked the ZBA to include that statement in its decision, just noting that we made that representation and we're and we're doing it without waiving our rights to come back. So, you know, probably unnecessary. I'm just lawyering it a little bit and I want the record to be clear that, you know, by accepting see Paul or Tom, the, the issue is that if you impose if you just go and impose a condition that we have to connect to the town infrastructure. And you just leave it at that. And then my client doesn't appeal that condition. And then the town never builds it. We don't want to be in a position where when we come back to you a year down the road, pursuing an alternative that you or some resident or somebody argues that by accepting the original condition, we've waived our right to now challenge it through a modification process. I just don't want that debate to be, I just, I want it to be clear that we're reserving our right to pursue a modification. That's all, you know, our, we, we're willing to accept that condition um, that we connect to the Milford Street infrastructure as long as it actually, actually comes into existence, existence at some point in the near future. That's all Agreed. understandable. Agreed. Otherwise this project doesn't go anywhere, you know, right? After a massive investment in just in the permanent and a little bit of time. In a little bit of time. Right. You get to see our smiling faces. <laughs> I, hey, I really enjoy this board. It's been a pleasure, but, um, and I hope we don't have to come back for a modification. I also think, um, by the way, that if we secure your approval on August 22nd, my hope is that that might actually help um, the MassWorks grant application, because I think it may be helpful for the state to know that the permits are in hand for this project since it's linked um, to the um, it's linked to the town's infrastructure project and by the way our MEPA filing which is also plan we're also planning to file within the next month is also going to cover the uh, this town sewer project it has to because the funding the MassWorks grant would be state funding and so we're kind of bundling all these things together in our MEPA filing to to facilitate, you know, our project as well as the towns. So I'm hoping that a planning board approval would also help that application process. You know, just in general to weigh in, I did um, look carefully at the letter that you wrote, and thank you very much for refreshing my memory on the issues. And um, and I, I had act actually no problem with any of you know some of them uh some of the potential waivers as you pointed out were probably not necessary because this is not a subdivision um right. but i think that i i looked at it and i had no issues with I, I would have no issues at this point unless somebody has something very different to say with approving all of them but you're asking for that vote at the next meeting correct correct Once you get okay. Correct, and those waivers would be reiterated again in the draft decision, oh. obviously. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I think we gave them sort of the warm and fuzzy feeling on the last time we talked about the waivers, and now with that final sidewalk waiver, yeah. I think I like to see it in writing. Don't have a problem with Mike and uh, the develop you know, developers team working together on uh, a draft looking at what we've done in the past and 
maybe improving on it. And uh, you know, I, I don't mind. I personally don't mind. Uh, you know, the the lawyering it so that you know, say, hey, I you know, we reserve the right, uh, even though it's there, because you yeah. don't know who's going to be at the table the next time this comes up. Hopefully, not me. <laughs> Hopefully, you will be at the future. <laughs> okay. Um, so we don't need a vote. Not well. Yeah, he's not asking for a vote tonight. And nope. I, the uh, suggestion was even to keep the public hearing open uh, and to not close the public hearing until August twenty second. In in hopes at that time you would close the public after reviewing a draft decision, as it would probably generate comments and questions uh, that you could you know ask the the applicant to clarify because it would still be. The public hearing would still be open, um, and then you'd close the public hearing, and then then take a formal vote on on the the draft decision. So procedurally, then we just we open the we don't vote to close. You vote, vote to close the or just close the public hearing. No, I would vote. I would tonight move to continue. Okay, that's what I'm. That's, yeah, that's what I mean. On okay. August twenty second. Yeah. Oh, okay. Tonight, you do it. Okay, that's that's what I thought. But you basically have a request from the applicant to continue with the yeah. formal. Yeah, yeah, we'll provide you with the written consent and or request to continue the hearing to August 22nd. And we'll also okay. consent to, um, you know, extending the decision deadline to some date after that to give you time to finalize the written decision. And I'll work with uh, Michael on that, Michael and Grace on that after after tonight. So, we're, yes, we're requesting a continuance to the August 22nd meeting. Okay. Before you do that through the chair, do, um, does the board want to, um, did you have conditions? Of approval in mind at this point, or do you want to consider that at the at the next meeting? I, I think the prior planner came up with a kind of a laundry list of what you would call standard provisions sure. that weren't in our yeah you know, our templates. So I think if Tom suggests you look at one of our last yeah good sized decisions, and then I think Paul D had a bit of a template. That okay, we, if you can't find it, I might have it somewhere. Sure. But it was good. We didn't necessarily agree to every one of them for, or that they applied to every project, yeah. but it was it was kind of nice. And you might have your own. Well, yeah, there's certainly boilerplate conditions that we can find and include. Uh, I didn't know if there was just anything specific that comes to mind as a result of all the discussions that have happened over the, the course of this project that you'd, you think you'd want to include. I mean, if not, just send it to me, I guess, uh, before the next meeting. If that something comes to mind, and we can discuss it as a board. Or you can discuss one it as a board. One of the then. things, Mike. Uh, one of the things, Mike. Uh, the 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 difference on this one will any of the waivers. So the the difference between this and the template is going to be whatever is, is standard, uh, plus any of the waivers will be listed separately because after the public hearings close, we'll be voting on those as well as the conditions. So you might as well put those any waivers that are left. You might as well put those on there at on uh, for the meeting. We know what those are. But I think if and I, I think if you guys get us the you know a draft when when it's you know when it's there I think yeah. it's going to be at least for me I, I work a lot better if you know if I see a draft I'll say oh and this oh, sure. and that yeah, yeah and oh I remember we should we got screwed on this one before because <laughs> we didn't have it there you know things sure. like that okay okay all right. So I would move that we continue the public hearing to August 22 at 710 uh, and uh, request that the borrower provide the, the borrow. I'm still in, but I'm still in work mode. <laughs> the uh, applicant provide a uh, request to uh, uh, extend the shot clock uh, to sometime in September. Yeah. I'll second that. Okay, so moved. Any discussion? Okay. Tommy? Aye. Paul? Aye. Ken? Aye. Margaret? Aye. Catherine? Um, aye. And so it's unanimous. Okay. Great. Thank you very much. Thank you. So, Have a good night. Have a good night. Take care. And Sean, you're staying on. No. I thought he was staying on for solo, okay. Um, oh, that's right, yeah. <laughs> okay, so um, this is not a public hearing. So the next item on the agenda is a request 
for the extension of 3032 Industry um, extension of special permit. You're on. I'm on. So we just need an extension for that. Um, the other issue that seems to be for my attorney um, is that Mylar, because she had put in a signing block, there were no signatures. So because on page three, number three, it refers to a plan, he needs to put the plan with the um, extension for us to record it, but I need a signature. So um, it, through the chair, the, uh, this was a, 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 a common driveway special permit yeah. granted just about two years ago. Um, and so the, yeah, the board voted to approve a special permit. I believe that such a permit is lapsing within the next month or so. Uh, so that's why there's the request to extend okay. of six months, uh, much like what you did with the, the limited uh, large lot frontage okay. uh, last meeting, <laughs> yeah. the, the request to extend that. Um, the question, I mean, the question I have to the board with this one, I mean, I, I would obviously suggest that you grant the extension of the special permit yeah. for six months. I don't see an issue with that. The, her, um, the applicant's attorney is suggesting that the board endorse the plan, and that I was unsure of. It's not common practice to endorse a Mylar plan with a special permit. I don't see anything particularly wrong with it, uh, but I would just throw it to the board. I don't know if there's been common practice with endorsing plans for, for common driveways. Um, it's well, not. Uh, um, I, hold on, Mike. Did, did we but, all we have got. All we're going to be endorsing here is the 81P common driveway goes to the zoning board of appeals and does not affect lot lines. The planning board has no business in this because there's no lot lines changing. Yeah, right. I mean, that's that's basically my question. The the special permit, I believe, was granted by this board, though. Correct. Yeah, I think so. That was befuddled by the city church. <laughs> yeah, I see uh, Gary. Yeah, the planning board signed this. Then a special permit. Yeah, the special yeah. permit decision. Yeah. Yeah. But it's just a decision. It's not the mylar. You, you, the decision has already been signed. Right. Uh, back to twenty twenty one. And and you're just voting to. Accept. But we never extend. We never signed the mylar. You never, never signed, signed a mylar. Yeah, never signed a mylar. It's the the her the request of her attorney that you endorse uh, the mylar uh, that goes along with this. Eighty one feet. Is an eighty one feet? I don't. I don't know. Was there ever an application for an eighty one P an A and R or anything with this? No, or? she uh, the the uh, civil engineer didn't realize that you didn't request require this signature block. So she left it on and she was talking to everyone back in Zoom days. And yes. so probably, you know, maybe everybody didn't see absolutely everything. I don't know. Um, but she didn't she will not take this off because it's already an approved and she doesn't want to um, change a document that's already been approved. I mean, this is this is odd. I mean, I, I expressed yeah, this. I know. To her earlier, it's 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 strange to have a um, a board endorse a, a plan with a with a special permit because the special permit decision is is the document that gets recorded with that decision, right? And typically, as as you've done, uh, sport is done through practice with your decision is is call out specifically plans, and the decision document will reference the plan because the plan is what goes on file that's kept here with my office. Um, and so that's the, we are the the keepers of the record, really, with the, with with those sorts of things. Um, I don't. So if we extend, I'm just trying to skin the cat without We're looking at too thick. Yeah. Right. So if we ex if we did an extension, we would do something in writing. Yeah. Saying we hereby extend yeah. the special permit dated such and such to be effective through. You know, roughly what eight months from today? Yeah, we should have here. Grace prepared this. Okay, for you. Uh, does it reference the plan? 
Yeah. Right. Yeah. We just say which plan is unsigned by the planning board. That help to say, you know, so which okay, we know it's unsigned. Yeah. So I'll but get is the plan on file? Is the plan on file already it, with the assessors or with the registry? The land yeah. board. It, Registry won't take the registry it. Registry won't take it with, because it has signature lines, and there are no signatures. So if we can no, take the plug the, off without the lines, they would take it. But she won't take the lines off because it's, she won't change an approved document. So they approved document. Oh, yeah. the, Correct. So the, if we the approve receipt? rather than extending it, is it possible just to? What are the town's the records on? How is this assessed? Is it assessed just like it is? Are the lot lines the same as the town has it? I mean, look. Or, or does this special permit change the the lines and and of the uh, the land as the town has it at the board of assessors? In other words, the town has this as a certain uh, a parameter and, and and distance and and whatever and acreage. Is does this plan change what's on file with the town? The entity that won't take it is the registrar of deeds, right? The nice lady. <laughs> I have a paper currently. So no, it's not, I mean, um, looking at what's on this. <clears throat> looking at what's on law. Yeah, my point is that this is a recorded lot. There's no purpose of the planning board resigning uh, an 81P application if there's no changes to the lot. Right. And and looking just looking briefly at that plan that's provided and looking at what we have for the assessing records and what is on file, it doesn't appear that there's a change. Uh, it, you know, just by glancing at it, uh, um, certainly not substantial at all if there is. Um, but and and I don't. You know, I haven't met a part of any of these common driveway special permits, but I don't believe the common driveway special permit creates lots in any way. It just provides access to existing lots. Then we correct? shouldn't be signing. Yeah, then we shouldn't be signing it. I agree. We shouldn't be signing anything. Can can no. we? And I understand that the the. Um, that the engineer doesn't want to take the signature block off because it was there on the plans we approved. Can we approve the extension and say that we also approve removal of the signature block from the approved plan? Well, yeah, they, that's what I'm, that's what I'm trying to get to, Margaret. Too right. So we've got a decision here where we, we're extending, and then there's an exhibit that says, you know, there's a second page that says exhibits. Exhibit A is the large lot frontage reduction special permit decision filed with the town clerk. Oh, is it large lot frontage? That's a carryover from the last one. Okay. So that needs to be updated. So it's going to be a special permit decision filed with the town. So we're going to redo this anyway. Yeah. So couldn't we do exhibit A is that plan with the signature black and no signatures and couldn't sign Exhibit B be a plan without signature blocks that can get recorded. Why not? Right? I mean, it's another plan. It's a pain in your butt, but it, if we sign something, it's a little bit what, what's goofier, right? Yeah. I, 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 the choice between the two, <laughs> right? I'd rather you not sign a plan that you probably ought to not sign, right? Because right. it's not. It's not an 81P like Tom was suggesting, um, so you wouldn't be endorsing that plan. So does this get filed with the registry? I mean, that plan is essentially an exhibit. I don't believe that will get filed, but they might file it with the um, the old approval. Right. So if we change this and say we'll call it the correct decision, yeah. right? And uh, exhibit A, the, the, uh, I don't know it's just the per oh. oh what's this is an exhibit for the for the decision, not the plan. I thought it was going to be the plan. Well, he does plan on calling this an exhibit when he goes to. We can. I mean, we can start. So the, the the last extension that I did is is that one, right? So that was the the McDonald large frontage. The, the exhibit A was 
the original decision so that the extension document goes with the original decision. Um, but then we can certainly add an exhibit B and do what you're suggesting, Paul. I don't have I, I don't have an issue with that really. Was this a um this wasn't a controversial no. I can't imagine. I remember. Okay. But so are we saying that we're going to uh, accept it with a blank signature box? No, you're going to, what we're going to. You want me to go back to my civil and have her take this off? Well, I definitely will need something in writing for her to say she'll. We can do that. It's a, it's a, it's a very insignificant change. It doesn't change the details of what this board approved at all. You're not approving a signature block, right? And you approve a special permit. No, it's just, I mean, it's more best practice, right? And, and, and we've got an issue one way or the other. It's just which way do we, yeah. what's the better way to fix it? I think so. And I think the better way is to not endorse a plan that you, is not no, presented exactly. for your endorsement. Right. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So, but the extension and then we'll say this again with that block. I will get in touch. So I'll fix this. So we could vote on the extension. Yeah, you absolutely vote on the extension. Yeah. And we're not voting. Okay, we're voting on the extension. Are we putting the language in with the exhibit B to be a plan without some signature? I would suggest to the board if you want to make a motion to extend the special permit by six months. Uh, August 13th. August 13th, so that's eight. If you know, essentially, you're just going on. So it'd be February, it'd be Valentine's Day. Um, yeah. Okay. Now we're going to need a second motion, correct? It would. It would be. Hold on. It would be the expiration date was set for August thirteenth, so it'd be six months beyond that. It was that Valentine's Day, February fourteenth. Okay, yeah, that's is that a, do you have a calendar? Can you tell yeah. if that's a Sunday or anything like that? That's what I'm looking for. No, nope, that's a Wednesday, so that'll work. All right. So I would move that the board vote to extend the uh, efficacy of the special permit to February 14, 2024, and uh, that we, uh, that, the, that the extension document uh, reference uh, an amended plan, which will be identical to the original plan, except that it will not include a signature block for the planning board to endorse. That's my motion. Great. Do you want to hear a second? Second. Okay, so moved and seconded. Any discussion? Okay, the sound. Is that what you need? I got what I needed. Okay. So we got a vote. Okay, follow the question. Um, Tommy. Aye. Paul. Aye. Ken. Aye. Margaret. Aye. Catherine. Aye. Passes unanimously. Terrific. Thank you very much. And um, if you're attorney for the Engineer, have questions. They can okay. follow up later. So. All right. I, but I'll let her know there's verbiage so that she take the block off. So. All right. Okay. And it's going to be amended so she can date it when she exactly when she does. Okay. It doesn't have to be dated back on the original one. Gotcha. All right. Thank you. See you later. Have a good night. Okay. Um, so, other items for discussion uh, potential bylaw. Map change. So, um, your last discussion. Oh. I don't, oh, pickleball. Where is pickleball? Oh. Is not me. Burn. Okay, pickleball. Discussion on pickleball courts. That's John good. Burns. John, you're muted. Thank you. Now I'm unmuted. So, thank you for taking me um, ahead of time. I would love to hear what you're saying about the other topic, but I appreciate you taking me. So um, I'm not sure I sent uh, it was last minute this morning um, 
Well, last week I sent something to Grace asking if I could uh, eliminate the pickleball courts. A little bit of history is um, this development was approved by the board for uh, Kevin Lobesa through his company, Lobesa Corporation, of which I purchased it about a, uh, about 15 months ago. So I didn't initially ask for the pickleball courts, although I did know that that was part of the approval. Um, having since learned there's controversy throughout the country, it pits neighbor against neighbor. Uh, people don't realize how noisy it is until they actually experience it. And we wanted to kind of cut that off at the chase and, um, you know, um, not build a pickleball courts. So um, one of the things I did is we have two people that have purchased homes in there and I forwarded to Grace. I don't know if she had an opportunity to send it to the board uh, today and then the board members read it. But uh, both of our current homeowners are uh, one is uh, vehemently against them and the other is against it. So I'm asking the board to make what I would consider somewhat of a de minimis change and um, not allow, not have us build the pickleball courts. Uh, to the chair, if I may, um, isn't this minor change can be picked up on a, uh, on an as built and I have to cancel my membership. Is that what you're telling me? Um, that's two different. One was uh, not was supposed to be funny. It's just it just seems to be minor change to me. This this so there's no um. This is yeah. This is like if you had a tennis court, and you decided to take it out. It's it's part of your community property. It's your call. Uh, it can be picked up in the as built. It'd be my opinion. Yeah, I mean, I don't, I don't remember pickleball courts being a point of discussion by this board. You know, that the, you know, like the, I mean, I know that we've, we've also talked about the hiking trails at this, which were definitely a point of discussion I, after the fact. But but also, I mean, it went into our, I think that went into our decision to approve this subdivision, this uh, project, it's not a subdivision, um, that, you know, that was one of the amenities that was available to the town. But I don't remember thinking that the pickleball courts were going to be necessarily a town amenity. Is there anybody that thought that this was something that everybody from Upton was going to drive up to North Street and play pickleball? Well, uh, well, that's what I was saying. This was a resi This was uh, for the residents. It was a residence only, uh, like a tennis court for the residents. It wasn't something they were charging admission for. You're going to have insurance and, and a, a, you know, a license to be doing this. You know, serving alcohol. It wasn't going to be one. Of, it wasn't going to be a business. It was just going to be for the residents. Yeah, inside, all 100% inside the the development. So I, I I'm I'm with Tom then. I mean, I see this as a contractual issue between the builder and and the buyers, and not necessarily a, a planning board issue that we can deal with as either a minor change or even you know that it's on the as bills. I don't I don't see an issue. Any other? Comments? Reading through the decision document, I don't see any, any reference to condition in your, yeah. I mean, like, honestly, like, if I would say if there was like a condition that, yeah. <laughs> that was specifically what you want to pick up all yeah. on this, uh, then yeah, you might have to do like an amendment to the special permit, but I don't, I don't see that. I would, I would just suggest to the board that if pickleball is removed, that it just be, you know, pursuant to the board's um, decision on this, you did you you approve the the development re uh, relative to the plans that were submitted. The plans specifically called out pickleball, but you know, I, I would say that if it's just replaced with something of a recreational nature, or not maybe not even recreational, but there's still some sort of community benefit to that community. That would still be within the realm of your approval. That would, I mean, that'd be my suggestion. You could might feel differently, but so I guess the question is, what's going to happen at the pickleball court site? You know, you're not asking us, at least not tonight, to say that you can put another unit there, correct? 
Uh, that would be correct, uh, Paul. We're not asking for that. Um, that th there's a few options that we have. That is one of the potential options. The second is uh, the houses in that area. If you were to look at the plan, there's um, <clears throat> when it's approved uh, just after the pickleball courts, what's approved is there's a house in front, then a house out in back, then a house out in front. It's a little tight in there. We're thinking about possibly just moving that a little bit so all three of them are at the same distance off of the roadway and the other is leaving it just as grass space. Um, I think and I can tell you we've had resistance from people wanting to buy up there because of the pickleball courts and specifically I have written in one of my purchase and sale agreements that I would agree to come to the board and ask to have them eliminated and if I don't get them eliminated the buyer will back out. I'm not saying that to put any pressure on the board I'm just bringing that to your attention that's how much resistance we've had to the pickleball courts. Uh, well, one of the things that I've made through this year, John, is these, uh, uh, those will all be done again through an 81 piece since the planning board has already released lots. It's a public way. And if you do want to change that, it should be a very simple process. If you want to tell them that just coming back to the board with the 381 piece or one, one, if you want with the three of them on it, it's, it's not a very difficult process for us. And I think it's totally under your control uh, on what you want to do with the property. Thank you. Yeah, well, I, but I would, I mean, I'm I'm comfortable saying you don't need to build pickleball corpse there. If you want to build something, you know, other than just leaving it as grass, I think you have to come back to the board and then we have to decide whether what you want to do with that space warrants, um, you know, constitutes a minor or a major change. Um, so I, I'm I'm very comfortable saying you don't have to put I'm comfortable saying you don't have to put a pickleball court there. But if you want to put something other than grass, you got I mean, to admit you'd have to come back. It, I, I, that's what I would figure um, that we would have to come back. Um, I didn't expect it to be that I could put whatever I wanted in there um, that wasn't approved. And um, yeah, that's not it's fully understood. Does this take board action or just consensus? Uh, my question through the chair was going to be, um, is he looking for uh, something official from this board as a result of this discussion to, I mean, because otherwise it is, I mean, it, it, this is just a discussion item on for Correct. tonight. Um, so, God. Uh, and the plan specifically, the decisions explicitly mentions pickleball. No, 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 the decision does not. Okay. Uh, that was the the plan. Like the plan does. Yeah. It mentions pickleball. My my suggestion would be I, 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 I'm guessing unless somebody says something different, Mr. Burns is going to have sort of the sense of this board as presently constituted tonight. Yeah. But he might want to make a a written request to us that we can take up at our you know at a future meeting so he's got something in writing for the buying boards in the future. And if and if that if I may, Mr. Chairman, if that is if the answer for you is to take the pickleball court out, rearrange lot lines, and put grass in, you're you're gonna you're gonna get a favorable uh, vote from me. I thought that's pretty much what I did. I had requested that we eliminate the pickleball courts, and it was my understanding that if I were to do anything else with that particular land where the pickleball courts would go, I need to come back to this board and ask for it. So I'm simply asking tonight that we don't have to build the pickleball courts and anything that would go in that area, I would have to come back to this board for. That's simply what I'm asking. I'm not asking for carte blanche to do whatever I want in that area. So are you asking for a letter from the board saying that the board does not require you to build the pickleball courts or you just wanted to hear what we had to say? Because um, I don't hear anyone saying we must, we, we require the pickleball. Uh, even if you would take a vote, even if you would take a vote on it and just said that, you know, majority of the board um, had agreed that I don't want to have to do the pickleball courts. I'm not trying to drag you into mine. It's just um, <clears throat> it's my opinion that I don't have the. It's not my option to decide not to build those pickleball courts. Uh, I can't just unilaterally make that. I feel that I have to come back to this board because that was part of the approved plan. So I would need something not necessarily a letter, but even a vote uh, that I could, you know, say it would be in the minutes of your meeting, anything like that. I, 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 
agree with him. I, I but I think that because this one just got tacked on within the 48 hour period, um, my suggestion would be that we put it on the agenda for an upcoming meeting, and that way it'll be you know at least notice to the public. Not not that we're noticing it out, but that it just be a request that we handle in the time that we would normally handle something like this. Yeah, it was also just noted on the agenda as for discussion. Yeah. So I wouldn't uh, I wouldn't suggest to the board that you take a formal vote. OK, just a question for John. Um, you mentioned and I didn't take your comments as a threat, um, mm -hmm. but the um, potential buyer you have because our next meeting is not until the end of August. Um, I think you have a consensus from the board. Ken, are you a strong supporter of the pickleball course? I am actually not a strong supporter. Okay. Of the pickleball. And Margaret? No, I, 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 do, I do not demand a pickleball court. Okay. So um, this is in the transcripts um, that the, you know, the inclination of the board is to um, support your request. But we do um, need to take formal action on it, and we cannot do that until our next meeting, which is until August 22nd. Would that satisfy your potential buyer, or is that going to? I don't know if there's anything. Think there's anything else we can do, but is that uh, does that uh, give you some cover? Uh, to, the, to the chairman, <laughs> uh, if I can go on what you just said, they they have to come back in no matter what. If they're coming back in. The getting rid of the pickleball court and coming back in with just grass, it's just going to be a change in frontage law. If they're coming in with any other thing, it still comes back to the same way. So what you have to tell them is you have to come back to the planning board regardless. If the pickleball goes and only because it was on the plan, you're going to take it off the plan and you're going to replace it with either how uh, with either the grass lots or, or something else. But all of them require you to come back to the planning board. That's correct, but the inclination of the board is not to require the pickleball courts. I mean, without a vote, that's the poll. <clears throat> okay, I, 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 you know, I'm amenable to obviously working with you, and and I do appreciate you not taking it as a threat. It's just it was, you know, um, I just wanted to throw it out there. But um, yeah. I, I guess at this point, I, I I was looking at it somewhat differently in that, you know, and I I guess I got what I asked for is you know what the board's inclination was so that I can go back to the buyer. The risk to me is, is that we're supposed to close late October and um, they want me to start the house. But yet until I get approval from the board, uh, this buyer has the ability to back out. Um, so I would be building that house at the risk of this board changing their mind for, for whatever reason. Uh, I'm not saying you would. So um, how long would it take you to redraw? How long would it take you to do three eighty one P's for that? I mean, to do a to redraw those lot lines of your surveyor. Oh, or uh, <clears throat> but that's not what he's looking. He's not looking to do that to it necessarily. He, he, like it, the simple change he's looking for is simply, I am not going to put a pickleball court on this open space. He doesn't necessarily have like that's the that's what he's asking for. And I think if he I, I, again, I'm not comfortable the board taking a vote tonight on something that's on for discussion only. But if this were, if we had gotten this a week ago and put it on for, you know, as a formal matter, I, I would have voted that he simply doesn't have to put a pickleball court in that open space. That open space, if it's common space now, would be common space after that vote. And if he wants to come back in, Tom, I agree with you. He needs either an 81P or, you know, something along the, well, this, again, this is a, this is all one big condo, right? So it's not actually lots, right? This yeah. is, but so it, I guess it, 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 but, but, but just for the vote, just saying you don't have to put a pickleball court there. I don't, I don't know. understand what that, I don't understand what that vote would even be. The vote we would take is that it was changed from one thing to another. We wouldn't it's simply not, vote. It's just being just, just, I mean, basically, it's a recre, it's a recreational space in the middle. <laughs> We're taking the pickleball court out, and it's just going to be grass. open space, grass. And so, if they want something else with it, then they come back. And then so they Tom, ask. I, yeah, I think what, what he's asking is a letter that says, 
that that you know the planning board votes to send a letter that says we do not require the pickleball court. That's all he wants from us at our next meeting, I believe. And and that land doesn't get divided between the three lots in that letter. If you wanted to do that, it need you know you need, it, it, it need a filing. If if we don't change the lot lines or the unit lines, then that's still open space, just not a pickleball court. But you know, John, the the, the issue is so that I think there's just agreement that we can't vote tonight. Um, you know, it'll have to wait till our next meeting. And seeing we're on summer schedule, that's not until late August. And so, you know, hopefully, and I understand where you're coming from. I wouldn't want to sink a lot of money into a house either. If, um, you know, but it is what it is. And so, you know, I, I think you have, you know, I think the board is in full support of your, you know, desire to remove the pickleball court. Um, we just can't vote on it at this at this meeting because it wasn't before us and, and uh, um to the chair it's um so it's it, uh, it's a senior housing community right so it was a uh, the the what was granted was a special permit um maybe it's maybe it's a, a matter of getting a opinion of an enforcement of the special permit from the enforcement officer uh, who's uh, basically charged with, you know, this board makes a decision and then um, that that decision is enforced in the field. Uh, so when it, everything, you know, basically, yeah, you're, you're zoning enforcement officer who's Pat, your building mm -hmm. is official as well. Um, so with this commentary provided tonight, then can uh, can be provided to your building uh, commissioner for an opinion on how, uh, whether or not that would be enforced uh, in, in any which way. Does that make sense? So like it wouldn't be, wouldn't necessarily, it wouldn't be viewed as a violation of, of the special permit and then brought to action uh, for enforcement action. But I don't know if that's why, yeah. why isn't it simple? If it's on a plan, we signed to take it off the plan and we sign the new plan. It's on a plan we signed. We can't do it through a vote. We can't do it through, uh, it, it, if it's on a plan, if it's on a special permit that we signed with a plan, then that's how we take it off. Through another plan. Oh. We can't just say it or vote on it. We gotta actually sign sign the new document. In, like in which case it would be a formal amendment to this special permit. I don't know how um, we'd do it procedurally, right? yes. How would right. Okay. All right. So we're saying the same thing. Okay. Yep. So it'd be, so it'd be, uh, so then I would suggest this to the board to the chair. Uh, John, you can you know take this conversation for what it's worth to your um, uh, uh, not uh, uh, buyer, uh, and then I think it's the recommendation of this board, but it would, it would also be my recommendation that. They file for a, an amendment to the special permit um, to clarify the use of that space, not necessarily to you're not removing a condition, right? Because it wasn't a condition, mm -hmm. but it was, as Tom noted, explicitly called out on the plans that were submitted. And so I, I think it would be in this board's interest. And even though it's even though nobody's a huge supporter of pickleball, um, it, would, it would be in this board's interest to maintain uh, the integrity of your decision, prior decisions to know, OK, well, that's fine. You don't, you know, in this case, you don't want to do pickleball, but that plan was still approved to uh, to convey some sort of recreational use for that development. And then, you know, because this board voted to approve that development based on the special permit findings of fact of which some uh, incorporate, you know, value to the community, things like that. And while that might not be open to Upton at large, it was still something that was decided to be a benefit to the community that was going to be created. So that's a long way to go for that, but that is still like the the boards when you're acting on special permits. That's what you're you're acting on. So I think it would be appropriate for them to come back for an amendment uh, for to give this board the option to clarify that officially on the record. And that's that doesn't. I mean, that's not going to be a. I don't imagine. I mean, the board can correct me if I'm wrong. 
for that to be a huge ordeal where you're bringing in, um, you know, peer review engineers. Yeah. 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 I mean, I just thought we could do it as a vote and that we require them to give us um, amended plan as an as built when they're done. Yeah. Right. I mean, so we, we take the vote in August, we might not get the plan until later. Right. But I think you do that as a formal amendment to this special permit. Does the board agree or disagree with that approach? I agree with that. Makes sense to me. I think it reaches the same place. I think Paul's is more elegant, but I just some some I'm I'm shortcutting it. Yeah, I know, but it's yeah, but you know, I think this it's got the eyes. So yeah, I know. I'm just looking. There's been a couple of issues that have come up recently that I'm looking at. Uh, it, and, and it's like, you know, it is frustrating to go through these long processes um, uh, to establish sort of these form formalities. But on the back end, yeah. um, it's it's worth it to have the the paper trail, yeah. for lack of a better word. Okay, John. So that's so I'm, that's. What... I'm, I'm not a hundred percent sure of what I do. Is a lot discussed there, and I, I refrain from saying anything. So I, I thought about ten minutes ago it was simpler and that we just come back in on the 22nd of august but in the uh previous 10 minutes I, I i don't i'm not sure if that changed modified am i supposed to request something in writing because i, I did put something in a week ago I, I believe i put it in last tuesday and um mm -hmm. so i thought it was a little more than a discussion um that i put in so i'm, I'm kind of surprised to hear a week later that it was a discussion um, so I, that I'm not wrong we again. Made, we just made it easy for you, John. We're going to make an amendment, and the uh, town planner is going to help you uh, just make an amendment to the special permit. Okay, it, that's that's where I was going with this. So, it, so do I have to do anything, or is um, Michael going to like write an amendment, maybe run it by me to say, John, is this what you're thinking, and then the board votes on it? Yeah, I'm just gonna I'm gonna look up the formal process to see if um, we need to advertise for a, a special permit or amendment. Um, um, but but there's plenty of time uh, to to uh, hammer out that official procedure before the next meeting. Um, so I'll, I'll be in touch with, with, with I, the next. You steps. know, this at the, you know, quite honestly, this is really not going the way I thought it would go. So I really don't want to go through another public hearing process for something like this because it's. Um, you know, so if it's going that route, I mean, this is a de minimis change, honestly, in my opinion. And, um, you know, I, I'm trying to keep it simple. And the other thing I, I don't, I, I, it was said early was maybe putting Pat Roach in the middle of this. I'm not sure that would be a good idea to put him in there. Um, you know, I, and I don't, I know he's the zoning enforcement officer. And if that's what you want, I respect that. But I'm trying to keep this simple. Um, if you've read any articles around the country, pickleball courts are a lawsuit waiting to happen. Uh, uh, yeah, we, I mean, it, it, it's very simple. If you don't want us to take action, we won't. And you have your approval. So I guess we're done. No, I want you to take action. I'm a asking you to, and I, but I'm trying to keep it simple. But with a public hearing, do you think it's necessary? A public hearing is not necessary on minor change. Okay, then let's do that. I'll work with Michael between now and August 22nd. You come up with it. Uh, Michael, I think you have my contact info, and uh, if not, Grace has it. And then we'll just be back on. Do you have a time for the 22nd of August, or um, is that TBD? It's, it's up to the board. Oh, well, we have the 710 is um, Governor's Landing, right? I do believe the motion for yeah, Governor's seven. Landing was 710. Oh, we want John at 7.05? I think, although oh, this went longer than I yeah. expected. Yeah. I think, I the, think you, know, you said 7.10. Right. Well, that was Governor's Landing, so what if we put John on before that 7.05? So it's not even a public hearing yet. We just don't. I know, it's just, so it should be pretty quick. Okay. Is that, is that? That yeah, yeah, that's that's fine. I understand your situation. I don't want to put you in an awkward situation. I don't want to make my problem your problem. I just want to clarify what I 
need to do and just trying to keep it as simple and work with you. So okay. <clears throat> I'll leave it at that. Okay, well, good luck. All right, thank you. Thank you, John. Okay, bye. Okay. Yeah, I think it'd be good to have him on before we have, because Governor's Landing will probably take a while. Oh, yeah. So well, I should ask before he shut up, but maybe still, oh, John's still on there. Was there any update with the, with the, Parking lot and the, the neighbors Lane. there. I was talking to him about the uh, uh, he doesn't, He's never heard of it. Oh, okay. Well, we'll keep it that way for yeah. tonight. <laughs> yeah, I was going to ask you on that too, but it sort of went on for so long. Okay. <laughs> they were talking what eight eight spaces. I know Bill Taylor was looking at it, um, but I haven't really peeked about it. Um, okay, so now we're back to um, solar. Yeah, um, the, so, so the conversation last time we had uh, Rick Morell on, um, and so we discussed potential for possibly a zone change, but then the board um, felt it was it was better to pursue just a bylaw change. Um, so I begun the practice um, with Grace's assistance um, to. Uh, what was sent out was you know, the, basically the simple change of the use tables, changing uh, what was suggested. The AR zone was switched from denoting N to denoting PB, meaning special permit comes to the planning board for for those uses. Um, and what I had also uh, started doing the process of was going through uh, the attorney general's approvals and disapprovals of solar bylaws as of as of late. Uh, so the last kind of two or three years, uh, towns have, a lot of towns have, have gone through the practice of relaxing their zoning bylaws regards to uh, solar. And uh, a lot of that seems to be a result of the conversation that we've had regarding case law that's come out about uh, recent uh, interpretations of, of solar. So a lot of communities are, are relaxing their solar bylaw to expand the use of ground mounted solar. Um, let me bring up some of my summaries on that. Yeah, thank you. Um, so, and what I noted, and, and I just noted it in the Spencer one, because I, I, I caught on pretty quickly that the attorney general was noting all the same case law for every single solar. Um, bylaw change. So they noted Waltham, Northbridge, and there was another one out of, uh, I forget what that is, it's not, it doesn't say it's first the town. Um, yeah, uh, so in Waltham, I just quote, it says Categor categorical prohibition of solar facilities in a, ma in a majority of the city without showing the prohib uh, prohibitions showing that the pro prohibitions is necessary to protect public health and safety or welfare is not allowed. So they specifically called that out. There, were, there was other case law that they specifically said that the towns don't have, uh, uh, they don't have the ability to say that solar is not allowed in, in large portions of the town, basically saying that you can't, you know, say that uh, you, you can put it in this zone, but you can't put it in that zone sort of thing without also reflecting on that statement that I just uh, made out of that case law, which is unless you prove um, to, the, to the, the attorney general's office that uh, making that prohibition is specifically uh, out of um, concern for public health, safety, welfare. And, uh, you know, I'm unsure as to what they'd be looking for as, as a result of that, but just things to keep in mind, um, what I saw for the most part, you know, I looked at West Brookfield, Spencer, Charlemont, Dighton, Manchester, New Marlborough, Washington, Hopkinton. Uh, for the most part, everything they submitted was was approved because for the most part, everything that was submitted relaxed whatever they previously had for, for bylaws. Um, what I was looking for specifically is in a couple of the cases, I can tell that the town had relaxed their bylaws slightly, making it so 
you know, they they opened it up to an additional zone or two in town while still maintaining that it's prohibited in another zone. And the attorney general came back and said, yes, we approved this bylaw. Uh, basically, only because we can't prove that you have, uh, uh, in effect, created an unreasonable um, regulation or restriction on solar. Um, so be forewarned, you know, this is the attorney general talking to the town in their their letter. So be forewarned that while we are not while we are approving your bylaw, it still might not hold up in court if it were to be challenged. So sort of was that letter after the June 2022 decision by the SJC? I believe so, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, but it's, that's what they're 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 basically on the trip that tracer lane case. yes oh the, every single one noted the tracer lane okay. that that became their um you know uh, boilerplate language as yeah. far as responses to towns for for solar that was in every single one uh yeah tracer lane north bridge swalowski briggs the, those were all the the case law that was noted in every single one uh and so that was it so that was uh so I mentioned that just to because we're talking about possibly just opening it up to AR. Now AR obviously is the largest zone in town, right? It's I don't know what the percentage is, but it's probably something like seventy percent of the town is is, is in AR. Um, so I, I, I would imagine that if you wanted to proceed with that change, it will likely get approved through the attorney general's uh, review, um, and we'll probably get the same caution if we don't open it up to like SRA, SRB, SRC, that sort of thing. Um, Hopkinton, I think it was Hopkinton, and then also Dighton. So Hopkinton did a three acre minimum for any new ground mount solar use. Um, and then I believe it was Dighton, or maybe it was another one, did a, a an eight acre minimum for a proposed a new zoning use. Uh, no, I mean, new, new solar use. Um, so again, the, the, the AG responded with, we can't prove that this is overly restrictive, but it may be through future court action that it's revealed that it is such. Things to consider. Um, Tracer Lane was 2% of the town's total. Yeah. Was was our commercial industrial. Yeah. I don't know where we are. Less than 10, right? Well, I did those numbers. What were they? We were north of 5%. Yeah. So we're single digits too. <laughs> so we might. It, it. So yeah, I mean, if we were to be chat, I mean, our our town council was not overly confident when it gave her those numbers. She, you know, she was she thought to herself, well, you do have, you have proved that you, what you have zoned has yielded results because you have solar fields within that zone. Right, so there's that, but you know, as far as if we're just looking at percentages, it's it's maybe not the best. Um, so, so that's where we are now. So I, I guess if we were to be challenged on our current bylaw, probably wouldn't hold up. Um, if we wanted to expand for special permit only to AR, I imagine the attorney general would would approve of that. Uh, I also, you know, unless some, you know, you can't see into the future and who's going to have an issue with what your your sra through srd zoning districts i mean that is that's your most dense areas in town right it, finding an, a, a plot of land large enough in that specific area you know i, I think it'd be hard pressed to to find somebody uh, somebody who's willing to pursue a large solar field in those zones anyway um but I'll also suggest the board, uh, do you, while making this change, if you want to proceed with this change, do you also want to make specific amendments to allowing for personal um, ground mounted solar use? Because in the bylaw, it doesn't specify that that's an allowed use. So I, I, I kind of talked for a while. I apologize, but, um, but, but what's what the pleasure of the board? Uh, that, actually, that was great, Mike. A couple questions to the chair, if I may. Yep. Uh, on the personal, on the personal, if it's not something that needs a permit, uh, like a special permit that you're talking about, um, that would be more of a ZBA than a than a planning board for a personal inside the person's lot. 
And the other thing was how big is what is the acreage of the ones that we've already proved? The one on one forty that seems to be working pretty well. What is you, what is the size of that one? Could that be could, could we use that some use that size or something? We've already approved that size, so that would be our our, um, our minimum. Your let me look at your. It's one of William Street, isn't there? Right next to the. There's like that section. Yeah, there are two parallel next to each other, right? Yeah. And one smaller yeah. than the other one. I thought that was up. Right on the line. You know those ones? Yeah. Bypass Dairy. That's on the line. That's on the line. I believe. Uh, yeah. Oh, the storage. Because we, yeah. It's literally on the. It is. It's the town. Dairy is the next property down. Okay. And Upton actually has a piece of property back ah. in that tree line behind the solar. Okay. It's kind of landlocked. Okay. So, I mean, your, your bylaw is broken into two. Um, two categories of I'll, I'll call it large solar. So you have you have a category that is um, solar that it occupies, I believe it's between an acre and two acres. I think it was says forty thousand to eighty thousand square feet, and then there's a particular particular wattage associated with it. Um, and then the other category is is anything north of two acres, and so those are the two uses that you currently have in your your uh, use table in the bylaw, and both the, the the smaller one, the the one acre to two acre, is allowed by right, I believe, with site plan approval by right, um, in the CNI district, and the uh, north of two acres uh, use category is is allowed by special permit uh, through this board. Um, so as far as personal use, you could definitely look into. Making you would have to look at what what the um, area designation would be for what, what what panels would occupy on a particular lot to serve a residential purpose. Uh, you could either decide to make that as a by right use or um, create parameters around that that would go through a special permitting process. Tom, if you would know, through the ZBA, if you wanted, um, that I, th I think that'd be acceptable. So this would be ground mounted personal instead mm -hmm. of roof mounted. Yeah. Actually, an Upton person moved up to New Hampshire. If I went up to Saki, I go up to her house every once in a while, and their neighbor has one. It's ugly. It's yeah, ugly. those are gotta say. Those well, right one on, there, there's one on South Street. Ground, ground, mountain. Mountain. ground so, Mountain Personal on South Street. Yep. I don't know if it was approved or by whom, but it's there. I'll also add that to the chair that. Um, in my conversation with town council, it was, I mean, this is about just clarifying that use. It was, it was her opinion that it, uh, the, the building commissioner could probably be approving ground mounted for personal use um, at, as a buy right option, even though it's not, um, it's not called out in the zoning bylaw. Um, and that was, that's supported in her opinion through uh, interpretation of, of mass general law. With the exceptions yeah. that have been challenged, um, so okay. Obviously, that's you know personal use. Obviously, being you know ugly or not, it's it's um, obviously different from the the commercial use, which is acres and acres yeah. of. of yeah. And as you were telling me before, that those large lots have to be accessed to three phase as well, right? Yeah. So it doesn't exactly open up the whole town. Right, yeah, so um, there's only a handful of roads in town really that have three phase power, right? Um, and uh, that is necessary in order to unlock um, having any sort of, I, th I think it's necessary for even having personal use. What are the three roads? Oh, not, um, a handful of roads, I don't okay. know, but. Uh, um, South Street. The South Street, definitely <laughs> up and down 140 for the most part. And it, it goes up Westboro Road a little bit, okay. which is surprising. Um, then it, there's three phase power close to the Upton line in, in Westboro. So I imagine at some point it'll probably come down that way. Um, you know, so you need you need three phase power in order to support these uses. It It is. You know, if you do get somebody who's looking to put in a large enough pro uh, project, there's always the option to 
create the infrastructure to make it work. So, uh, Mike, that question doesn't Mechanic Street have three phase power? You're and probably right. No. And doesn't and don't uh, uh, dispensaries or cannabis operations require three phase power as well? That I don't know. Wouldn't we be uh, killing two birds with one stone if we could get three phase power through the town? But we don't make that decision. So, I mean, we're here really to discuss a change to the bylaw for for solar, not to. Oh, I'm, no, I'm, I'm I'm saying if you have a project big enough, uh, they would uh, they would extend it from wherever it is to wherever they need it. Um, just oh, like yeah. we have just like we have town services extended uh, for certain projects. Somebody if we could if we had the bylaw in place that would allow somebody to do such a thing. To have solar and have and have like I say a cannabis farm with solar, uh, they wouldn't. They would extend it and they'd they'd have a reason to if if you know if it was profitable, and they could do it. It's just a thought. So when do you think you'll have a draft? Well, yeah. So I just want some input from the board. I mean, we can we can sort of just. Would you like to just make the simple change of just altering the the use table to to keeping your so you have your regulations sort of as is. And what I also found through through my research is that the the um, solar bylaw that we have in place um, pretty much mimics what the state's model bylaw uh, is. So that's good news. And I imagine that's what was used. Um, uh, so, um, but if you're if you are to add this use to the AR zone, do you want to consider additional regulations or anything like that? I mean, you, you already have in the in, in your regulations for specific to solar, um, if it's adjacent to a residential district, then the setbacks expand from like, I think it was, it's like 30 feet to 100 feet. So if you're, if you're adjacent to a residential district, the setback uh, for, for a panel has to be 100 feet from the property line. To the residential district, um, that that seems reasonable to me. But uh, you know, if uh, either way, you'd have to make the change, and it would be a small change in the in the verbiage of that bylaw to accept accept switch out residential district to residential use, uh, because right now, as you know, this use is only allowed in the commercial industrial zone. So if it, if it abuts a, a residential district, your bylaw. Um, said we'll make it 100 feet so we can add more protection to our residential uses. But if we're adding it to the AR zone, it'll be nothing but residential uses adjacent to it. You know, it'd be very unlikely that it's even a, a adjacent to a commercial use. Um, so, do you want to maintain well, uh, setbacks? Do you want to add setbacks? Are there, are there additional safeguards you'd like to put in place or you'd like to evaluate? I would suggest that to start, we make the change. That it be allowed by special permit in AR, and then I think we drop a footnote off of that, saying minimum blank acres, okay. or, you know, yeah. blank square feet, right? And yeah. you know, I mean, mm -hmm. is it ten acres? Is it you know, is it thirty-seven acres? You know, we're not trying to spot zone this one spot, right. but we don't know what we can, you know, what's reasonable, yeah, and get a sense as to if it's ten acres, how much. You know, how, how much do we have? And and I would say, you know, minimum setbacks, you know, 100 feet. Yeah. And 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 at least that that gets us at a discussion point. And again, just like I said to Jeff, we might think of other protections we want. You know, but that, I mean, that's essentially uh, through my comments. What I was suggesting is, I, I mean, I think a minimum acreage is good um, to have for the AR zone. Um, so, I mean, I there'll be a footnote just on that AR zone use. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, one of the reasons, and Paul, one of the, through the chair, one of the, Paul, one, I agree is because it's a two, it'll be a two step process. Not only are we may make an addition or a footnote, but we have to have a public hearing and there may be an addition or a footnote from the public. So we'll have a public hearing on what we think is going to be it, but it will change according to the input. And then the final one will be put, given to the selectman, right? Yeah, yeah. And the goal is to get this on the warrant in the fall. Yeah, so I'll I'll reach out to to Joe, town manager, to um get a get some, um a placeholder because uh, the warrant <laughs> I think might be a 
opened and closed uh, before our next meeting. That opened in September. And, and, um, last I heard, it was going to be opened in August. So, oh, unless that's changing. Oh, okay. But either way, I'll, I'll make sure this place is meeting? Usually, town meetings. You have November. 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 Yeah, May. Yeah. Oh, they close it out in August. It's okay. It yeah. might change. Well, yeah. Okay. Well done, Mike. Thank you, Mike. Thank you, Grace. Yeah, we'll make those changes and we'll just for the record. Grace has done a lot of the work on that. She has. Grace helped a lot. Mike just is a mouthpiece for the work she does. <laughs> um, OK, so the other thing we have to discuss is um, the committee assignments. Uh, so I know I'm on capital budget. Paul is on um, CPC. Um, you want to you keep it? Well, I, uh, I'm chair right now. I'd be happy to have an end date of May if that would help everybody. I know that you expressed interest in it too, though. Well, I, I actually really like capital budget. Good. So. I'm, I'm happy to say. Okay. Steering committee's not going <laughs> to. Yeah. Grace That's probably wants me off, but. <laughs> Can I make a motion to uh, make a motion? Well, let's, get all, let's get them all out. Yeah, why don't we get them all out there? So we have CMRPC is open. That was one Gary had, right? Yes. Barbara, what do you have? I don't have one, so I can take CMRPC. Okay. And Tom, you don't have any either, right? And I won't by the end of the meeting. <laughs> and Ken, and there's there's no others we need to. Denise wanted me to inquire about from associate members at something. Associate member of this committee. Could advertise for so that the legislature screwed up the associate member mm -hmm. position, right? Because they're only able to be activated for special permits, and yeah, you know, we get them. We get a special permit and. Uh, site plan at the same time and bill could only act on one but that's what it is it was great to have bill here yeah his insights are great um mm -hmm. but I, I i my preference is to be you know see if we can get somebody that's interested it's also a kind of a nice way to ease somebody into so, town yeah. government yeah. yeah sure one of the letters that john had was from you know one of the new residents of Congress creek and he used to be on the planning board in native yeah, so that's so I was thinking that I should go knock on the store. I'll walk up there someday. Oh, <laughs> yeah, uh, well, but, but Paul, so we, do we jump? actually have applicants then for the uh, associate's position? You have a letter. I don't, think, said, I don't think we've let people know we've got a position open yet, right? I think and, it's and, uh, just said there was a letter from someone. Oh, no, there was a letter from John Burns. You know, John Burns gave it, um, one of the people opposed the pickleball court. Oh, okay. Um, I have a, a on this one. The um, uh, no, go ahead. What? I lost Tom. No, uh, Paul already said it. Never. Okay. okay. So, do we want to advertise for it? I think it's a joint position with the selectmen, so I'll probably have to check with them, right? Yeah. To, and to and yeah, I'm sure. Yeah, I would put that on. Didn't, um, what was his name? The British guy that lives up adjacent to... John Brooks? Uh, David Brooks. John David Brooks. Brooks. Dave Brooks. Yeah, yeah, David Brooks. He applied last time around, I think. So. I don't know. I didn't know. Oh, I'll reach. I'll reach out to him specifically then. Yeah. And I, I believe I read uh, somewhere that some towns have had the associate member uh, join in on administrative duties, like approving the minutes and and mm -hmm. uh, things like that, that they could qualify as a member for that administrative part of the meeting. Have you heard about that? Maybe Mike, have you heard anything about that? Yeah, they should be able to join in on all those all those things. I don't think there's anything that prohibits them unless we had something locally that would restrict that power. I, I don't which I don't think exists. Uh, yeah, you can approve minutes. Uh, you can do all those administrative things. 
we never had bill approved minutes or anything like that. I don't believe approved budgets or minutes. I would move to appoint Kathy as the board's representative to capital budget, Margaret to CMRPC, me to CPC. Those are the appointments. Um, we do a separate motion for the uh, associate member. Well, that's just, I think, okay. the telling So, do I have the second to Paul's motion? Second. Okay. Any discussion? Okay. Um, Tommy? Sounds great. Aye. Paul? Aye. Ken? Aye. Margaret? Aye. Catherine? Aye. Okay. Second motion. And I would, uh, I, I, I think the chair and the planner can, should, I suggest that the chair and the planner work with the town manager to uh, seek uh, applicants for uh, the associate member. Okay. Do I hear a motion? You move to second? I'll second. Second motion, sure. Okay. Um, any discussion? Tommy? Aye. Paul? Aye. Ken? Aye. Margaret? Aye. Catherine? Aye. Unanimous. Okay, anything else open for discussion? You look exhausted. I'm sorry. <laughs> well, I think it's because the, the room has gone dark. I didn't have any. Oh, no, it's really cool. I'm just watching it change up there. Um, I did get an email from uh, Jeff Roloff's or in, uh, he, he, uh, ex extending the decision deadline to September 12th. Just so I wanted to make that okay. note on the record, but we are still open. Okay. Looks like a spooky mom? movie in Maine. Margaret, it looks like it's from a spooky movie in Maine. Yeah, I, I think we're going to be packed soon. This, this was the first general store in Lovell is the house we're renting right now. It's been moved across Keyser Lake to the other side, but it's pretty cool. Yeah. Oh. I've been looking at your pictures on Facebook. So, so do I have? Do I hear a motion to adjourn? Don't move. Okay. Do I have a second? Second. Okay. Tommy, any discussion? Aye. Okay. Tommy. <laughs> Paul. Aye. Ken. Aye. Margaret. Aye. Catherine. Aye. August twenty-two. Great. Right. Well right. done, everybody. Great meeting. Good night.